Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, cousins in binary tree two. So I'm just gonna jump straight into the example because this problem isn't super complicated conceptually at least. So the idea is we are given a binary tree like this. We want to modify the value of each of these nodes such that we take each value and we replace it with the sum of pretty much every other node on that level. So I'll actually start with this level just to make things clear. This level has a sum. The sum of the entire level is 18. So for each of these nodes, we don't wanna replace them with 18. For this node, for example, we wanna get the sum of all other nodes in that level except for like the node itself and the sibling of that node. Meaning that like if this and this are sharing the same parent, they are siblings. Now this one doesn't have a sibling. So this one is gonna be replaced with the sum of these two. So that's 11. For this one, it's gonna be replaced with this, which is seven. And for this one, same thing, it's gonna be replaced with this. It can't include this one because that's its sibling. So it'll be replaced with a seven. So that's how we're getting this, this, and this. So obviously two nodes that are siblings are always gonna have the same value after we modify the tree. Now, how exactly do we compute that? How do we know which value is gonna go here? Like in terms of the level sum? Well, you could think of it this way. A node is gonna be replaced with the level sum minus itself and its sibling, if it has a sibling. So you know, I'll just say minus A and B, and those are gonna be the nodes themselves. So this is how we can solve the problem. Suppose that we compute the level sum for every level. So it's a five here, it's gonna be 14 here, and then here it's gonna be 18. We can do that most easily with a breadth for search, pretty natural tree traversal algorithm to compute this. We could also do it with a DFS, but I prefer BFS in this case. So now we are actually going to traverse the tree a second time. And this time, again, we could do either DFS or BFS. I'm gonna do BFS just cause that's the way we did it the first time anyway. So it doesn't really matter. This time for every node, we're gonna take the level sum minus this value, like the original value in that node and its sibling if it has one. This one doesn't have a sibling, so this is gonna be five minus five, so it's gonna get a zero over here. Then we're gonna go here, same thing. The level sum is, it's not 14, it's 13, I'm sorry about that. So 13 minus four, and it has a sibling nine, so minus nine as well, we're left with zero. So same thing over here, 13 minus nine minus four, we're left with a zero. We'll do the same thing for these as well. So you probably get the idea. The only difficult part is for a node, how do we get the sibling of that node? Now there's multiple ways to do it. We could save pointers. We could go look at the parent and then look at its other child. There are many different ways to do this. In terms of BFS, the easier way actually is like this. Suppose we're at this node. As we are adding its children to the queue with BFS, that's generally how BFS works with a queue. So that's when we're actually gonna update the values of the children. Not when we're actually visiting the children themselves, but when we are at the parent. So from the parent's perspective, we can see that we have two children. So we can get the sum of those two children, which originally is four plus nine, and that's 13. And then from that, we can subtract the level sum. Well, we can take the level sum and subtract from that the child sum and then that'll be the replacement value. So from here, we would see that the level sum is 18. The children's sum is one plus 10, that's 11. So we can take 18 minus 11, that's the value that both of the children of this guy are going to get. So there's multiple ways to do it, and I think this is a reasonable approach. And the time complexity, since we are traversing the tree twice, is going to be big O of n times two, that is linear time though. In terms of space, it's gonna be big O of N cause that is the worst case uh, memory complexity for one of the levels in the tree. So let's code it up. So this will be a nice two phase algorithm where we will first compute all the level sums into an array. So let's do a BFS for that. We will create a deck and we will initialize it with just the root. 
I just realized I didn't really explain too much what BFS is. I have plenty of resources on that. I have plenty of YouTube videos, and you can also check out uh, this course where it goes through a breadth for search pretty in-depth, has a lot of like animations and all that stuff. So you might find this useful if you're a beginner. Uh, but continuing, we can say while the queue is non-empty, we are going to compute the sum at the current level. We'll initialize that to zero and we'll say, okay, for every node currently in the queue, so we're going to take a snapshot of the length of the queue. So just to go through every node in the current level, we're going to pop queue.pop left. We'll get the node. We will take the node's value and add that to the current sum. And after we're done computing the current sum, we will append it to the level sum like this. And we need to continue the BFS here. So if the current node has a left child, we can say this, append it to the queue. And we can do the same thing with the right child. If it has one, we can append it to the queue. So that's pretty much it for the BFS. The reason I can do it so quickly is because I've written this like probably over a hundred times. So it just comes with practice. And now let's do the second phase where we are going to take for every node and replace it with the level sum minus the node and its sibling. There are many ways to code this up in Python. I'm going to first do it this way and I'll show you like the other way as well. So let's say we have a deck. I'm going to append to that queue just the node. But actually, if I do it this way, if where if I have the node and the sibling sum, like the child sum of that node and its sibling, then it's pretty easy to code it up. So we can add a tuple here where the node and the child sum, and for this node itself, it's just going to be the value because it doesn't have a sibling, of course. Now, coding it is going to be very easy. We're going to keep track of the level. Initially, it will be zero. And I'll say, while the queue is non-empty, again, I'm going to go through every node currently in the level. So snapshot of the length of the queue. I'm going to pop from the queue. And this time, I'm going to get two values. I'm going to get the node, and I'm going to get the child sum value. So that's what I'll call it. Actually, I'll call it a value for now. So we're going to replace that node's value with uh, the level sum at the current level like this subtracted from it that other value that we just popped which is like the sibling sum pretty much so actually let me i'll leave it as val but probably a better name for it would have been sibling sum so this minus val now for our children we want to continue the bfs so we're going to have a couple if statements like these so i'm just going to copy and paste these for now but when we append to the queue now, we're actually appending a tuple. So to this tuple, I want to not just append the node, but I want to append the sum of this node plus its sibling, if the sibling actually exists. So both of these are going to get the same value, uh, the second value appended to them, if they both exist, assuming. And let's call that the child sum. So I'm going to put that here. And I'm going to put that here. Now we just need to compute what that is. I will initialize it to zero. And I'm going to need a couple if statements to compute it. If the left child exists, we will add to it the value of the left child. So let's say child sum, add to it node.left.val. And then let's do the same thing for the right uh, child as well. So we're doing this from the perspective of the parent, because from the parent, we have access to both of the children. But from the left node, we would not have access to its sibling, the right node. So here, I'll change that to a right. So with these two if statements, we will compute the child sum, and then we will append the child sum here. Unfortunately, we can't combine these if statements very easily because we need to compute the sum before we can execute either of these. And we only want to execute each of these if that node actually exists. So I think this is like a sufficient way to code it up. Last thing down here, let's not forget to increment the level. And then down here, we are just going to return the original root of the tree. We already modified the value of it, so we should be good. This is pretty much the entire code. So I'll go ahead and run it. And you can see here that it works and it's efficient. I will show you a slight variation of coding it this way. If you don't want to append a tuple to a queue or just depending on the language that you're using, if you can't do that, we can modify this approach to just uh, add a single value. So just the root. 
we can, rather than updating the value after popping from the queue, we can do it this way. So here we won't have this one since we're just popping a single one. We will do this. We will still have the child sum. And rather than just appending the child sum to the queue, we can just use it at this point. So we're getting rid of this because we just want to add the node itself now and getting rid of this part. Before we append that node, we can update the value of it. I mean, we could also do it after. It doesn't really matter if you put the line here or here, but this is how you would update it. You would say node dot left dot value is going to be equal to the level sum at uh, the current level. It probably wouldn't be the current level at this point. It would probably be the level plus one because if we're at level zero, we're at here and we wanna update our children, we would want the level sum of the next level, but that's what this is. And then from that, we'd wanna subtract from it uh, this value and uh, the node.write value, which we already computed up here in child sum. So we can do this. And so I'll copy this to put it down here because it's gonna be the exact same for node.write. And so now we're almost done. The only thing we're missing here is that we started with the root node. We pop the root node and then we update the values of the left and right child, but we never update the value of the root node. But the value of the root node is pretty trivial to update. It's always going to be zero. So we can say root.value is equal to zero. So unless I have any bugs, I think this looks good. Let me run it. And yeah, you can see it works and it's also efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.